life, sex, goals, and oh, hell knows, this is Midlife Craving. Boom, boom, pal, baby. I'm back, and I've got my girl Carissa here. Hey. And, and you know, I like to call you my little firecracker, but someone called us thunder and lightning when we get together. And I think that's an excellent way to describe the energy that is us when we get together. Yeah, I was like, which one's which? And it's like, does it does it even matter? I know. <laughs> we're, we're one and the same. Right. Chance of a storm, 100%. We can call it a shit storm, but we're bringing the excitement, all of the bangs, and we will light up a motherfucking room, let me tell you. You know, you just said, like, which one are we? You know, I think maybe we switch roles at times, and whoever's making that noise or taking out the electricity, we are a force together that cannot be ignored. Yep, they go together. Like, you can't have one without the other. Exactly. (laughs) Making some motherfucking noise up in here. All right, so it's time for my five-minute orgasm where I unload – I always think of unloading (laughs) – I unload all of the things going on in my life. And, you know, you guys have heard so much from me lately. So today's recap is going to be a little quickie. Nothing wrong with the quickie. Uh, Nope. (laughs) All right. So I've been working hard to stay true to myself and, you know, thrive in this new life that I've created. I think back to a year ago when I was a completely different person. I'm going to be honest. Like I was fucking spiraling. (laughs) I didn't know if I was coming. Mm, Coming. (laughs) I cannot say that fucking word (laughs) or going, you know, many times I wouldn't even be able to tell you like, you know, which end is up, but by working on myself, honoring my core values, finally respecting my worth and truly holding to firm boundaries, shit's done changed. I mean, even the time that I've known you, I've noticed the difference. Thank you. I'm proud of myself. Like I have gotten rid of some shit I need to get rid of. You know, I did. I made some tough decisions. I know I've seen that it's not been easy. It's not been like. You know, everybody sees the product, but not the mm-hmm. work that goes into it. And right. That's. But it works if you work it. And, I, and I'm fucking working it. <laughs> I, I was just going to say, like, you know, I'm not saying that it's easy, but it's, you know, it's fucking worth it. You know, I'm finding myself with no confusion, zero anxiety or worry, no questions. And the freedom of that is pretty fucking amazing. <laughs> I was going to say pretty fucking damn amazing. <laughs> it's all of those fucking things. You know, last night I went to the gym for two solid hours, wild Friday night, but whatever. I didn't have anyone asking me what's for dinner. No one's questioning me when I would be home. No forced family fun, no shit to rush around to. It was really nice. And that's like some form of peace that I haven't had in a long fucking time. So there's just something about go do you go do whatever you want, whenever you want. doing me. It's probably my favorite thing. (laughs) No, (laughs) you don't say But, you know, I've been working really hard and I'm treating myself next month to some well-deserved time off. I'm looking at uh, taking a trip to New York City. I haven't been there in a long time. I'm going to Bahamas for my birthday. And then I got a little beach bungalow the week after, you know, a vacation after my vacation. (laughs) I'm going to rest, recharge and come back guns blazing this fall. All right, so let's wrap up this five-minute orgasm, and I'm going to talk about something that I swore I never would, but I feel like it's vital at this point. This is more of a PSA, if you will. You know, I truly started the show because I feel like no one talks about how crazy, wild, difficult, and insane this time of life is. My goal is to normalize the what the fuckery by sharing my story and letting people know It's okay to not be okay. It's okay to find yourself craving more and wanting more at this stage of life. It's also okay to be sex positive. I mean, honestly, that's a beautiful thing. And shaming others for it is fucking ridiculous. By putting myself out there and being unapologetically myself, I hope that you feel empowered to be loud. I want you to be proud. I want you to live your best fucking authentic life and let your freak flags fly. With that being said, I know that this creates a huge vulnerability for people to turn this into something negative. I know that putting myself out there and saying out loud what majority of people would only think, it makes people uncomfortable. You know, everyone wants to hear those pretty little lies about life. And you're not going to get that from me. You know, I what I said when I started this podcast, like, I'm not holding back. I pride myself on being real, raw, like, oh, baby, I like it raw. <laughs> and completely transparent. 
And it's really important to remember, you know, you only see a fraction of my life. You see what I plan to put out on these episodes. You don't see me as an amazing mother. You don't see me working hard in my career. You don't see me working feverishly behind the scenes or me with my family or me helping my 97 year old neighbor. You know, you see a small window of who I am and yet you want to judge me completely on it. And that's really unfair. Yeah. And I don't think everybody deserves to see those things. They don't Mm -hmm. get to have access to those things unless you choose for them to exactly you know not everyone knows everything about you they can judge you off of this the one episode and then today's episode and they don't know half of what you have going on what you're working towards or what you're striving for in your life and but that's because I choose to keep that protected I keep that personal as you should and you know so I'm just just putting it out there like just remember we're real people (laughs) we have real lives you know what you see is what you get with me and on this show but there's a lot you know my world is very big it's not just the small podcast show that I have you know and I feel like it it really applies to everyone you know everybody's showing you what you want that or what they want you to see yeah everything on social media and everything there is way more going on behind the scenes we just choose to Put and most of ours out there. And we show the, I, you know, I'm showing the good, the bad, and the ugly. You know, I'm not afraid to do that. But it's just, I just want to remind that, you know, I do have a whole a whole other side of this life as well. Just like everybody else does behind closed doors or, you know. Yeah. And that and that is yours. Right. And let's leave it at that. Yeah. So I just want to say this. If you're someone listening to my show and you feel the need to immediately tell someone like my ex-boyfriend, uh, you know, something that I said or something to hurt him, or you're someone who's screenshotting, criticizing, and then sharing it with someone else to shame me or one of my guests, I want you to go look in the fucking mirror. You know, think about why are you doing this? Are you living your best life? Are you happy? Look internally at yourself about why you would do something like that and start working on filling those voids because the people that are doing this, they're not doing this to help the other person. They're doing this to project their insecurities, to make themselves feel better. And that's fucking toxic. (laughs) For real. Yeah. And, you know, I talk a lot about sex on the show, but I also talk a lot about self-improvement. I promote share, I promote and share growing and changing to live a happy and fulfilling life. So even for my haters, like I want you to do the same for yourself. (laughs) I mean, I really do, you know? So on that note, I want to share two traps that you should avoid in life. And I fucking love this. I posted it on my Instagram and I got a lot of feedback because it really will resonate with everyone, I think. So two traps you need to avoid. Number one, caring what they think. And number two, thinking that they care. Once you realize that you are reborn, once you accept that you're fucking free, you know, and as for me, you better believe like I don't fucking care. In fact, I really don't give a fuck. I'm not afraid. And I sure as shit am not ashamed about anything that I have done or said or, you know, posted or anything like that. Like, no. And it, it makes me laugh too, because like the shit people shame me for is the same shit they're doing themselves. Or, you know, they're the assholes who judge me and then go jerk off to my photos. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm just keeping it real, you know, like I always motherfucking do. All right. So let's get this motherfucking shit storm started, Carissa. I feel like the first thing I really want to talk about with you is dating. Ugh. I know. I feel like there's so much to say. And, you know, this whole dating thing is new to me. And I'm not even dating, but I have some thoughts on it. So the first thought that I have when it comes to dating is I, and something that's new for me is I think that it's really smart to take things slow. So I'm talking about the old Adrian who would jump in with both feet. Like, I'm not going to do that anymore. I got to dip my toe in the water and test things out for a little bit. And, you know, let things naturally take place. I don't want anything to be forced And this is all new territory with me. And I'm not looking for anything serious right now, but I feel like moving slow is really just something I really need to remember during this time. Well, yeah. And so, you know, and I think that you are moving at your own pace. I wouldn't say slow. Yeah. Like you said to me, like, it's going to be a long time. And I was like, no, Adrian, it's going to be the right time. I know. I need to remember that. That's true. You know, because I feel like like a long time kind of makes it seem like it makes it seem like it's so far away and that you're it's going to take so long for you to get it Mm -hmm. when really the second that you stop worrying about when 
is probably when you're going to when it's going to work out the best. Right. That's like the right time. I know. I just have to get this new. I have to get this new thing in my head where it's like not everything has to happen overnight, you know. So the next thing I want to talk about when it comes to dating is that I feel like I need to keep things open, keep my options open, which sounds kind of shitty. But, you know, I think dating multiple people at a time, it gives you options. And then it also doesn't allow you to become all in with someone. You know what I mean? Like not all your eggs are in one person's basket, especially when you're just starting out. Yeah. And I think that's kind of how you ultimately will like get to the place where you're like, I like spending time with this human yeah. more so than, than the other, that other human. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you, this one's on the front burner. Oh, yes. Like this guy gets the right front burner. This guy, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's true. So I do think, you know, and I'm not promoting, you know, sleeping with every person or getting, you know, close with every single person but just you know dating keeping my options open you know i think that's a big yeah, thing I, I, I can relate to that like for me personally like there's only one person on my burner right now but you know i don't but i don't want to date right now i don't want anybody yeah. else on my burner and yeah. that's just because it's just a terrible cruel world out there <laughs> as we found out recently oh my god you know i mean let me just tell you, like, I don't know if we should just like start talking about that, but really quick. I just want to say that, you know, I feel like when you're dating multiple people as well, and I'll be open about it. Like, I feel like that person will know, you know, I'm not going to be a hundred percent available to them and they're going to have to put in the work if they want to be my only pot on my stove. I feel like I've like exhausted this whole analogy, but you know what? It fucking gives you a visual and it's the way that it fucking is. So I don't know. Should we talk about this dating disaster? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it wasn't, I don't even feel like it was a dating disaster. It was like just a male disaster. Yeah. Like it's almost like who the fuck do you think you are? (laughs) Well, yes. And so, you know, I I understand that this isn't a general representation of men. Right. It just another occurrence that made me say, I just can't with people. So, yeah. Yeah, Yes. You went on one date. This is one date. It wasn't even a date. So I met met somebody and they were like, hey, do you want to hang out? And I was like, sure. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't anything crazy. I they seemed nice. They seemed like the conversation was good and stuff. So we just went and got some drinks. It wasn't anything crazy. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't, I just, like I barely knew this person. So we went to a place that I go to often and where I know people. So I felt safe and it was on the way. No, it was when you were leaving, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so (laughs) we were just all hanging out and I thought he was a relatively nice guy. I only knew him for 48 hours. Yeah. (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) And so we go to leave and he goes to make a move. And I'm like, I got to go home. And he's like, well, do you want to fuck or what? And I was like, okay, well, you know, yeah, Yeah. it's 2021. I guess let's just get cut straight to the chase. And I'm like, well, regardless of if I did or didn't, in this case, I don't. Um, but it's, it's shark week, bud. Like it's not happening. I love how you call it that. (laughs) And, (laughs) I, I, so I tell him no. And like at this point, I'm like really just like you're you're kind of just. Yeah, that's too much. Yeah. Like I'm I, done. It, like why? Why are you like it's not the fact it's the fact that it was expected that was really mm-hmm. cringy. Right. To me. Mm-hmm. So I was like, absolutely fucking not. Mm-hmm. So he then goes he starts huffing and puffing and then proceeds to tell me that he's so sick of women having the control over if and when men have sex and that we control what they do with their bodies. And I was just like, um, well, well, my pussy is mine and yeah. your fucking cock is yours. I don't know what the fuck you're talking that, about. That's I was always under the impression it was just yeah. about two consenting adults that are deciding that, yes, you may have access to my body. And um, right. so I was like, oh, f- fuck this. This guy proceeded to send me paragraphs on paragraphs about how I'm entitled and I'm just oh, like, Lord. and I, like I said, I understand that this is not a, a representation of all men. It's just one of those things where it's just like, I've I, give, I know want, it's like, well, I'm a wave of white flag. Yeah. Like, I'm you, fucking done. I know. I don't like, I don't want to go through any of this stuff, mm-hmm. but you know, like I said, it's right now. I don't need to worry about that. I just, yeah, I'm just moving on. on. Yeah. You know, like seriously, just moving on. But that's a great thing to show what not to do. <laughs> yeah do better guys i mean come on like what the hell i know I and know. if anybody out there like agrees with this man like you suck yeah you <laughs> sucks really bad 
I hope no one listening is agreeing to that. My God. All right. So let's talk about dating and when it comes to sex. So I know that's a huge, we just discussed this. Oh, wait, I forgot to mention. He goes, and don't mention me on that fucking podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Sucks to suck, fucker. (laughs) This is why I fucking love you. All right. So let's talk about sex. Okay. So I know that, you know, dating, it's a huge, you know, part of things, but I, and, and God, who am I? But like, I feel like I want it to be with the right person. So I want that passionate, hardcore fucking, and you're not going to get that with a rando, you know? So, and I, we we were discussing this, like, you know, when you first fuck someone, I don't care who it is, even someone you're really excited about, things are a little awkward at first, you know, it's like those first fuck moments. Like you have anxiety of, are they going to, you know, be good? Are they going to like me? Whatever. And we were discussing like, this is why a recycled fuck is so enticing. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is how you get into that cycle of recycling. I know. Cause you're like, well, I know this shit's good. I'm going to go back to that. Yeah. <laughs> He's already seen me He's naked. Like, <laughs> I don't have to go. Th- I don't have to tell my favorite fucking color. I can just go do it and get yeah. it done. Right. All right. So the next he knows thing- I have that birthmark there and like, you know, just. It's and fine. also when someone's really good, you're just like, oh, I know it's going to, you know, it's, I know it's a sure thing. I know thing. what to expect. Exactly. Yeah. So, and guys think the same way. Like I know somebody out there is thinking like, well, that's fucked up. Well, guys think the same way, you know? Yeah. Why do you think people get into these entanglements? Yes. Oh, I love that word. <laughs> entanglement. <laughs> All right. And then I think when I, when it comes to dating, something new that I'm going to do is staying true to my core values and put my worth first. Uh, that's definitely something I have not done in the past and I am ashamed of myself. And now shit's changed. Like I'm, that's something I am not backing off on. So I was going to talk about, you know, when we allow these behaviors, we enable the assholes. You know, we talk about this, you know, men believe that this behavior is acceptable because some woman out there has allowed it oh, yeah, for yeah. X I amount made, of time. I made that point. I was like, you know, some, uh, you know, men, men suck. And it, it, for the, for example, in the story that I just told somewhere along the line, one of us women allowed this guy to think that that's okay. Yes. Right. Somebody is not doing their part out yeah. there. <laughs> and I, listen, I'm guilty of it too. Like, like I said, I've had affairs with married men. I have made epic mistakes. I've let men walk all over me. I've, you know, been taken advantage of I'm codependent. Like these are all behaviors in the past that I did that enabled other guys, you know? And I want to say that, you know, the shit that you tolerate is the shit that you're going to deal with. It's a really simple thing. You know, I was, I was thinking about, you know, Lil John, like he had it all right. Don't start no shit. Won't be no shit. And I, for sure, I don't want no more shit. <laughs> I'm fucking tired. I'm 40 and I'm fucking tired. <laughs> yeah. Well, and like, I think other, the other thing with dating you is they have to be okay with this. Girl, this. listen, we already discussed okay? Here's the deal if you want to date me. Because, you know, some guy might be listening and be like, I'm going to shoot my shot. Go right ahead. But I can see you twice a week, every other weekend. Oh, and by the way, everything we do and everything that I, you know, it's going to be out there and I have a podcast yeah, show. Yeah, we're going to talk it, so. about it. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I need a real confident man. Like, see, here I go again. I'm thinking it's going to take a long time. But no, it's going to take the right person at the right time when it's right for me, you know, I mean, and there is, there are plenty of men out there who wouldn't give a fuck. There's plenty of men out there who would love how wild and fun and outrageous life is with me. You know, I mean, there's nothing worse than someone who's vanilla. Like, right. And it's like Uncle Mo said, there's 7 billion people out there. Exactly. There's gotta be at least one, at least one. Yeah. I'll find them. But you know, I, sometimes I I've like met someone who's like, Oh my God, I'm dating this new girl or what? And I'm like, Oh my God, she makes vanilla ice cream look so fun right now. That's not a good thing. You know, like, like not even sprinkles on it. (laughs) Yeah. I'm like, that shit is fucking boring. Like I'm bored. (laughs) You know? And yeah, my life might be a shit show at times, but at least it ain't boring. Cause fuck that. Well, and it's also like the other thing that. I think everybody has this vision of what their perfect person looks like in their head. Mm -hmm. And then they're attracted to something completely different. Yeah. They have these boxes that they think that they want to check. But I can guarantee you, if you presented them with their perfect person, they wouldn't be attracted to it. Yeah. They're attracted to the complete opposite. Most people are. Yeah. And then and then on top of that, they have to check all of the boxes. And then you have to be physically and sexually attracted to them. Woo. Yeah, that's a lot. Wow, it's like hitting the jackpot. So I think, you know, <laughs> it's definitely a, a good thing to have your standards and yes. to continuously to raise your standards. 
and but knowing nobody. what you want is half the battle and then like being open to accepting different things is also key yeah nobody's gonna check all of your boxes right. and you're going to end up I liking someone, someone that, that doesn't like, fuck my box really well yeah. and then, like, you know <laughs> shit like that that's one box that they have to check yes oh fuck yes all right so there's something i want to talk about when it comes to dating and it's something that i'm always going to remember and i feel like Everyone listening should think about this too. So you need to see the situation for what it is, not for its potential. Like this is huge. There's no time for gray areas. There's zero time for games or what ifs. See the situation for what it motherfucking is and avoid it if it's not exactly what I want. So there's this girl, you know, I love TikTok. Um, Her name is Liv and her TikTok is at glow and heal. And honestly, I've been talking to her. I think I'm going to have her as a guest uh, next season. So I'm excited about that. So her TikTok that I originally fell in love with was she was telling a, a scenario that she was in. And she said, after a few months with hanging out with this guy, she asked him, do you like me? And he said, no. And in that moment, like, this is so me. She was like, she wasn't, she, she, instead of choosing herself and recognizing when someone doesn't like her, it's just their loss. You know, she said, it's okay. I don't like you either. I just want to be sure we were on the same page and it's good to have a friend you can have fun with, right? Like I've done this, right? And she said she knew she liked him, but her ego could not handle the rejection. So she ignorantly moved forward and, you know, she saw the situation for its potential rather than what it really was. And she said something really eye opening to me. She said, you know, if he hangs out with me more, he'll see that I'm amazing. And she said it was torturous for her because every time they went out or hung out, she would go home and then like question for an hour, like what it was about herself that wasn't good enough for him. And I, God, I feel that I feel that big time. Um, I've been there, you know, and she was talking about how you have to choose yourself, see situations for what they are and not their potential. And she was talking about how the truth will set you free always. She said that, you know, he texted her one day and she was like, you know, I'm not interested in seeing you anymore. And she said for the first time in her life, she felt free. And she said to remember that when someone doesn't like you see it as their loss, you know, rejection is redirection. Like, I really like that. I was like, wow, that's a good thing to say. You know, instead of thinking of it as, oh my God, I just got rejected. Think of it as this is going to put me in a different direction, you know? Yeah. And I also read something along the lines. It kind of plays into the same thing about what we end up breaking our own hearts by putting too much emphasis on where we stand in somebody else's life yeah like just because we are sitting here going i really like this person and this is very this person is very important in my life Mm -hmm. and while they're not even considering us as a part of their life right that doesn't feel good but take that rejection And see it as redirection for yourself. And, you know, just know that there's like wonderful, endless opportunities for love for you and that it's best to never settle. And maybe as a hot best friend. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But seriously, you know, I really loved her take on that. And it was because it was brutally honest. And I'm so excited. I think I'm going to work out where she can come on because she is all about, you know, healing and living your your authentic life and being happy in relationships. So I'm hoping that to have her on. (sighs) I'm getting hot and sweaty. Like I have I have like lip sweat and tit sweat. (laughs) Yeah, it's pretty warm in here. <laughs> and all of this and it's talk. Prob- it's probably because <laughs> the two of us are in a room oh, together. Oh, right. Exactly. Um, yeah, the, the heat is rising. You know, like the clouds are rolling in. Thunder, lightning. <laughs> um, but all of this talk, it just makes me just want to stay single forever and just live my life as an old lady with a million sex toys. <laughs> you know? Um, speaking of toys, uh, if you follow me on, on Instagram, I am sharing my order at Adam and Eve. I know what you want to say right now. I, yeah. Go so ahead. I walk into Adrian's <laughs> house today and I go, yup, this is the right house. She has sex toys charging all over her island. <laughs> like, yep. This is it. That's how yeah. I knew I was in the right place. What'd you say? Tell, what'd you say? <laughs> tell me you're friends with a sex podcaster <laughs> without telling me you're friends with a sex <laughs> podcaster. Yeah. If I'll only first. Yeah. If, <laughs> if only TikTok would allow that. But no, but you know what? And I just want to tell you, you know, you can go update your toy box too. So go to adamandeve.com and use the code CRAVERS, C-R-A-V-E-R-S, and get 50% off one of most of their entire website. You're going to get three free gifts, access to six movies, and free shipping. That's code CRAVERS, C-R-A-V-E-R-S at adamandeve.com. By the way, so you were here when I got my order the other night and I just oh, opened yeah. up today. Okay, so one of my free gifts was a clit sensitizer. Make me come. I, yes, 
And I'm going to try that. I seriously, like, I'm going to save it. And I'm going to try that because I was thinking like with a partner, like, I wonder if it will up my chances with making him make me come, you know, like, I wonder what it is about like, it. I'll set, put like what a little makes bit it, on. Yeah. Is it like numbing or oh my is God. it? This could also be a disaster. Yeah, I was gonna say what? this could be this could backfire. <laughs> yeah, I'll let you know. What if it's like that stuff that's like hot and is like, Ooh, yeah, <laughs> like like icy hot or like oh. or like you just put I, I don't think fireball so. on your cooter? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's a visual. <laughs> um, let's. <laughs> There's a lot of men out there that are thinking like, I will lick her clip for a clip tastes like fireball. <laughs> All right. So yes, yeah, so I'm going to try this, like make me come clit sensitizer thing. And I was laughing because I was like, I'm um, doing, you know, unplugging and charging and doing all these toys. And I was thinking about, you know, have you, I'm going to ask you, have you ever like fucked yourself so hard that you gave yourself a belly ache? <laughs> I have not done that. <laughs> I'm gonna put my hand up. So I I jerk off all the time. We've talked about this. And last night, I don't know, I just like wanted to feel fucked. You know what I mean? Like it's been a while. And afterwards, I was like, oh my God. Like I had to take some fucking ibuprofen. Oh my like, God. My like, I like hurt my own guts. Like, how's that possible? Like, yeah, you are I really need you. to get laid. This is fucking pathetic. But whatever. <sighs> you know, I've been working myself out with that because, and like people might think like, I don't think it's humanly possible to jerk off that much, but I got to get it out. Like, otherwise I'm going to malfunction. All of this talk <laughs> just makes me want to talk about sex. So let's talk about it, baby. Let's talk about sex, baby. I, yeah, I feel like, yes, I feel like no matter what, my conversations always somehow may get back to a sexual topic. <laughs> I mean, like we've been comparing some funny sex capades lately and I think we need to share them. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Tell the funny Kung Fu fighting story okay so it was a while ago i used to have a friends with benefits situation mm -hmm. that some of the best kinds yeah <laughs> it, was, it worked well and then you know we would if we both got into a relationship or something we would we wouldn't even tell each other we would just be like okay he's not texting back or she's not yeah. texting back got it that's like me and pawn star totally. yeah and so we would uh just stop talking and then next thing you know we would like wyd just, yeah yeah dtf right so <laughs> I got a text and it was like, hey. And I was like, oh, okay. Guess they're done. And right. So he was like, yeah, next time you're around, hit me up. And I was out for my birthday and I was wasted. So I said, WID. Mm -hmm. And he met me out. We drank more. I was already wasted. Went back to his house. Y'all are getting it on. No, uh, well, no, we finished. We killed a bottle of wine too. So we were oh sufficiently intoxicated. <laughs> And I, it was, yeah, it was really drunken. So I ended up, we both ended up just passing out. Mm -hmm. And I woke up probably not long after I passed out to him literally flying through the air kung fu style <laughs> towards the door and like holding it <laughs> shut. And I'm like, I sit up and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Where, first of all, where am I? Who <laughs> am I? Who is like trying to figure out all the details real quick. Still sufficiently drunk. And next thing you know, this there's a girl just that barreled <gasps> through the door and had my hair in her hand. And I'm like, oh, that was fast. But ass naked. Oh. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. So him also butt ass naked pulls this girl off of me. And I'm like, and is pinning her down in the corner. And she's just screaming at me. Who are you? Who are you? Oh, no. And I'm like, I don't even know right now. <laughs> and if I did, I wouldn't tell you. So I'm like, all right. Bitch, you tell me. Yeah. <laughs> Who are you? And she, I'm like, she goes, and then she turns to him and goes, is this the girl that sends you pictures of her tits? And I was like, nope, that's not, that's, that's not me. Were they nice? As my tits are out in her face. <laughs> So I'm like, I hope they were nice tits that oh my God. she's referring to. So I'm like slowly putting my clothes back on while she's like, just, they're screaming at each other. And I'm just like, do, 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 do. Don't mind me. Yeah, you're like, I'm going to go. I'll let myself out. Yeah. So I'm <sighs> like, like, get dressed in front of both of them. Um, proceed to walk out into the living room, <laughs> go to grab my jacket. And it wasn't there. So I went back into the bedroom <laughs> and go, excuse me, I left my jacket in here. <laughs> oh, one last thing. Yeah. yeah. Don't mind me. Oh I did. God. I did end up telling her I was like, cause she was like, 
I was like, honestly, if I knew that you existed, I would not be here. Yeah. I and, I, and she's like, I'm sorry. I was like, no, I probably would have ripped myself out of bed by my hair if I were you too. I, I don't know. You know you what are. though? Can I just say for a moment? It was nice of her to like realize, and I understand that she reacted out of anger and I mean, I get it, but it was nice of her to be like, Hey, I'm sorry. Like in that quick turnaround, because that's what a real woman would do. It's not about you. It's about him. Yeah. Don't be mad at me. He's the one. He, he knew you existed. I didn't. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) So I, yeah, I mean, I get it. I get that she just reacted. Yeah. But, um, and then afterwards he was like, he texted me and apologized and I'm like, yeah like that didn't that didn't need to happen and then asked me if he could take me to ihop and i was like (laughs) (laughs) yeah let me get that triple stack bitch yeah i was like well you kind of i'm like i'm i'm i don't even i wasn't even hungover i was still drunk i was like well ihop kind of sounds good (laughs) let's discuss this over pancakes yeah as i'm still taking like pulling clumps of hair out of my head oh my god that was fun um then for the longest time, even if I was dating someone, I would always get dressed after sex. Like immediately <laughs> I was like, you're like, I don't want to be caught up in this yeah, shit. That's never how that was a one and done for me. Wow. That's a, that's a, that, that's a little tactic right there. Like get dressed immediately after so that you're ready to hit the ground running. If some guys like Kung Fu style on the way to yeah. the door. <laughs> yeah. That's like hysterical. I've, oh God, not again. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, this has happened. So this has happened to me twice where so I was having an affair with a married man. I know, shame me. I, you know, like it fucking happens. And I went to his fucking house. I was young, man. I was like fucking, I think 22. I, yeah, I was really fucking young. And I'll never forget. It was during the day and his fucking wife came home. And I was like, oh, shit. And I hid in the bathroom for like an hour. And I was like, bro. And this is before. I didn't have, I had like an old razor. Like, and I was just like this. I was like, JKL semi, you know, WXYZ. Like, I'm like trying to text this. Yeah, I'm like trying to check this shit out. I'm texting this shit out. I'm like, God damn it. But yeah, so I got, I hid in the closet there. And then I also, with Pawn Star before, I've hidden. Could you imagine if she ended up walking in and just saw no you? no but you know what though i'm the kind of bitch that i'm like if i did if she did i'd be like yep yeah, it's me and like <laughs> this is here a, i am no you i'm just... sorry I, I didn't i didn't mean to hurt you like i'm sorry like this happened but i would own up to it you know what i mean i'm not gonna yeah. be like some little girl in the back that's like oh my god i'm not here this wasn't me it wasn't my fault. no this I'm isn't like, where i left yeah. my keys <laughs> no <laughs> yeah. no i'm like bitch i fucked your husband okay like this is what happened yeah. like i'm just gonna own up to it and just so you know i've been cheated on a million times too so it's, it's gone both ways and i know it's fucking wrong but anyway so i've hid in you the live bathroom. and you learned yes many times over <laughs> I, yeah. I keep learning that was, these like yeah. fucking lessons not just that lesson but just like many lessons you know i was joking around about how prince charming thought he would get back with me and i'm like well of course he would because it he did the last 838 fucking times yeah. like why would this time be different it, there's like a tiktok about that, that oh yeah 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 and she's like you only got 900 chances left with me buddy yeah yeah <laughs> i don't put up with no I shit with, yeah. <laughs> i don't put up with no shit that's right you only get 7528 <laughs> chances <laughs> Then you're done. <laughs> yeah. Then you're dead to me. Yeah. So I hid in the bathroom at his house. And then with Pawn Star, I was hiding um, in the closet. And I was like, you know, Adrian, get your fucking life together. I have not been in that situation since that. But yeah, it's amazing Like when you when you experience something like that, you're like, oh, shit, you know? Yeah. So you learn your lesson. You move forward. Yeah, exactly. Moving on. Exactly. You know, on to the next one. Okay, so this story that you told me was probably one of the funniest things. And it's it's um, it's like so weird. It's like this fate that stopped you from doing yeah so this regret. was actually um a reflecting point in my life like so it was um after a breakup by the way really quick it's so fucking hot in here i'm gonna put a high noon between my titties i know I, my <laughs> shirt's too high but i contemplated it i'm gonna take a picture of this i'm gonna share it on my I, i'm literally fucking dying i'm gonna put i have i'm like my tits are sweating so like i'm gonna put it's a nice high little noon. koozie Ooh, this is actually feels really good okay so keep going i have high noons between my tits don't worry about yeah, it don't okay. just <laughs> d- don't mind me yeah so tell this awesome fucking funny story so it was actually it was after um a breakup and it was one of those situations where this is actually a self-reflecting moment of when i was like um we're not doing that anymore that's not working for us Mm -hmm. um so i was gonna drunkenly hook up with someone because i was just really my coping yeah coping mechanisms and that's why you know what if it's too bad you didn't know me you could have done the 60 day no d diet it would have kept you out of that kind of trouble right well that's why that's why i partook (laughs) this this last go around yes 
um, instead of doing this. But that this was the time that I was like, what the hell, Carissa? Yeah. So, you know, so paint the picture. So you're like making out with this guy. Yeah, we, we started we started um, the process of, you know, with the inevitable. And I'm like, all right, like we go and we go to my bed and you're like as, making out heavily yeah and i as soon as i hit my bed i felt my bed vibrating and i was like oh no like i didn't think this i did and i'm like sitting there like um well this is awkward but like yeah I, that wasn't a hint i'm just kidding like you thinking were you thinking like maybe my vibrators yeah, yeah yeah it was like i was like but i didn't like when was the last time i used that and yeah. i was like oh this guy's gonna think like oh hint hint nudge nudge like yeah so i'm like uh, so I go and I'm like, and we're in the dark. So I'm like feeling around on my bed and I feel something and I pick it up <laughs> and it starts moving. And I'm like, what the oh. hell? <laughs> and I throw it. And then this guy's like, what the hell? <laughs> it's a fucking murder hornet. I'm telling you, this thing was the size of my fucking palm. He still had his pants on. It oh went through his jeans and his leg Swelled the it, like, fuck stung. up. It's so you threw it at him and like it a dart, stung the like sh- a fucking dart. <laughs> and I didn't like a. Why is there a murder hornet in my house? B. Why is there a murder hornet in my bed? <laughs> C. Why is it in my bed when I'm bringing a guy home? Yeah, like, like God. Why, what series this of events was not that was happen? Right. Yeah. Like, watch out for my guard murder hornet. Like. <laughs> So oh, wait, no. so it stung him. And stung like, him through his jeans in the leg. Oh, my God. And I'm like, okay, well, that's definitely, that, that, that's a buzzkill. <laughs> yeah, hold on, that is literally a fucking buzzkill. Buzz <laughs> <laughs> and this fucker is like, oh, my God, my leg. Yeah. <laughs> and it was dark, so he didn't even know what was going on. Oh, he, my God. He wasn't expecting to just, like, get, like, the, the fucking ham- <laughs> Thor's hammer on his leg so i'm like oh my god i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> don't mind me and my murder hornet right uh, oh my god i forgot i left that there <laughs> so i'm like le- like do you want some ice like oh my so he god. ultimately he ends up leaving which i don't blame him yeah but I, so the next day i reflected on the fact how would i feel about myself today when i woke up because it, the point was to make myself feel better. Yeah. And so, honestly, I wanted to go thank the murder hornet yeah. for preventing me from making <laughs> another poor life decision. And that's when I decided to stop using that as a coping mechanism. Yeah. You know, for everybody's safety. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, this motherfucker's going to patient first. Yes. <laughs> Hope you're not allergic, yeah. bud. God, that is such a funny story. I swear. Like, I was just like, wow, what a way to cock block. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. Fortunately, it was a person that I was not interested in. Yeah. So, it, but if I, like, I, I would have been so embarrassed That's if it was so like. so funny. Oh, wow. I really you liked what, that though, guy. Carissa, if the right guy, if it was the right guy for you, he would laugh it off with you as well. Right. And then fuck your brains out. <sighs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> with, with the, with the, with the birth, like a yeah. f- fucking uh, stung up leg. Like, whatever. Whatever it takes. Oh, my that, God. Uh, yeah. So that that was fun. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. If you ever need to. Uh, you want to you want to just you know plant a murder hornet in your bed. I mean that. What are the fucking odds of that, girl? I'm I'm not kidding you. Like I don't I didn't see the stinger, <laughs> but it had to, based off the size of this thing. I kid you not. It was the size of my palm. This is insane. And I was like, and then for you it? to like take it and throw it. And it well, yeah, it and I picked this thing up like it's just like. <laughs> I thought it was my vibrator and it was a fucking bee. And then I throw it at him oh and God. hit him perfectly in the leg. Like wh- what recipe for success? Was I know. This? I know. It's absolutely yeah, insane. Like, okay. Yeah. So, so funny. And the, the, the best part is like, I always like call usually my sister mm-hmm. when like things like this happen. I'm like, so <laughs> on this episode of you can't make this shit up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i a murder hornet yeah. cock blocked my lay last night yeah <laughs> but in a good way yeah and it's like why why not and she's like carissa how does how does this shit happen to you i'm like That's, i know it's fucking funny one of the funniest stories i've heard for sure when it comes to sex in the bedroom <laughs> and there was no up. sex in the bedroom. there was no sex in the bedroom <laughs> okay one of my funniest cock blocking stories yeah There's a lot of those oh my god so that reminds me I actually was thinking about it after the last episode when we were talking about unsolicited dick pics. 
Oh my Have you God. ever gotten an unsolicited dick video? Yes. Unsolicited? I, got, I once got an unsolicited dick live video. Okay. Oh, like, but uh, go ahead. Okay. So. <laughs> whatever. Right. So um, I kept getting unsolicited dick pics from this one guy. I barely knew this guy. The mm-hmm. only way that I knew him is my friend was hanging out with his friend at a bar and we were just kind of like the friends that got stuck hanging out with each other. Yeah. But then later on in the night, uh, we went to go get drunk food mm-hmm. and the line was super long and he was ahead in line and I saw him and I ran up to him and I was like, hey, if I give you money, can you just give me French fries? And he was like, if you give me your number. And I was like, fuck it. Take my number. I want fries. <laughs> I'm drunk and those yeah. are fries and I want them in my face. Yeah. Um, it's fucking fries. So he's like, so he never ever said anything like to me other than just sending me pictures of his dick. And I'm just like, what? Yeah, was I'm it like a, was it a nice dick? I, I uh, no, <laughs> like <laughs> I didn't talk to him. I never, I never right, talked you to him. Who the, okay, yeah, okay. It, it was just like cool. You have a dick, dude. Yeah. Like great. I'm happy for you. Congratulations. Right. So and I just so I just ignored him, mm-hmm. and then it just became like kind of a funny between um, my friends. So right. anyway, we go out. I go out with a group of friends to a bar. We're taking like this lounge area. A, cu- a couple of my guy friends are there. I'm sitting there and I get a dick video from this guy. And I'm like, mother fuck. Like, why? He's up in his game. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, what? Like, you didn't get the response from the picture? So now yeah. we're going to. And the angle, it, every, with everything about it was terrible. He oh, was God. like, looked like he was sleeping in the picture, but it was from like his, like his asshole took it. Like, I don't even know. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it was just, no, like. <laughs> Too much. Okay. Too much, bud. <laughs> and so I'm like, what the fuck? And so I just, I showed everyone. I showed all my yes. friends, all my yeah. guy friends, pe- random strangers at the bar. I'm like, this mother, this fool. They're like, who is that? And I'm like, I don't even know him. Yeah. So at this point, I was like, enough's enough. I think I even at one point was like, okay, you can stop now. Yeah. And he still wasn't. So I was like, enough's enough. And I just took a video of everybody making fun of this fuck. And they were legitimately, I didn't tell them to, to make fun of him or anything. They were legitimately like, well, who does that? Yeah. Oh, making fun of him. And I just videoed everybody <laughs> making fun of him and posted it on my story and said, when oh you get God. unsolicited dick videos at the bar. And he was the first one to look at it. There and then he go. blocked me. And then guess yes. what? Yep. Problem solved. Problem solved. So yeah. just good for you. Thinking in 3D over here. I'm laughing. I'm laughing because, okay, there is a way, and I'm all about, you know, sexting, dick pics, but you have to warm up to it. Like, you know what I mean? You have to be like in some sort of relationship or some sort of like agreement with someone. You know what I mean? Like, you don't just send unsolicited dick pics. It freaks me out. It freaks me out to the, like, of the fact that somebody just met me and and is like, I know what she wants. Yeah. She wants to see my dick. Yeah. And I'm like, "Uh, no, I don't. All I wanted was fucking french fries. And we've talked about this before on the show, you know, like if you send a nude or you send like, you know, dick pic, pussy pic, whatever, like you're going to show your friends. Like, yeah, I mean, I send shit, but and I know they're going to show people. I just took it to the next level. Yeah. yeah, It's some next level shit. But I'm laughing because me and you, what was it? It was two weeks ago. Yeah. Breakfast. We got breakfast. (laughs) Yes, you already remember. And I was like sitting there and we were, oh my God, we were so hungover. That was after BBD was here, remember? I was so fucking hungover. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. And there was a lot going on that morning. Yeah, and and I, we had to go get my car. You, you, we, came, you had to pick, you picked me up because I didn't have oh, my car. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, we went to breakfast. And uh, I was sitting there. And there's this guy who, like, I like talking to. He's a super cool guy. And he has a beautiful cock. So, of course, I want to see it. But we're on that level where I can look at his cock. And remember, I was like, look at this, Chris. Like, it's beautiful. Yeah, I'm like, beautiful cock. <laughs> Yeah, you're just like it's just like a, a random. Would you like orange juice and cock? Yeah, yeah. cock to go with that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm showing my fucking friends. That's what's happening. You're like, um, especially if it's a go one. Yeah. Well, I, I that already was knew a video when... too. I was like, watch this. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm. It's like, oh, why is, I, why is Adrian smiling at her phone? Yeah. <laughs> That's what Adrian smiles at her phone about. It's not like, <laughs> right. It's not something cute and romantic. No, it's, it's like, like oh, look at that mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. Let me see what you're working with. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right god i just like all these stories are fucking hysterical like my stomach hurts the high noon between my titties is shaking <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> trying not to spill it 
All right. So I have questions. Question Ooh. time with Carissa and Adrian. Um, you know, a lot of my listeners send questions. I always screenshot them and save them for later. And then I pick a few and we're going to answer them now. So, all right. Someone asked me, they said, you always say that confidence is key in the bedroom. It is, by the way. Um, how do I get that? I'm going to say the best thing you could do is just start by loving yourself. You know, we were talking about this, Carissa, like, and I even kind of still do it too. Like, you know, whenever you're getting ready to fuck someone for the first time, it's like, I have a punch list. Like I'm like, Hey, yeah, I've had two back surgeries. (laughs) I've had a baby. Um, I had a tummy tuck. Uh, also I have an IUD and I haven't had a period in like fucking months. (laughs) Yeah, like you want to, you're just like, I need to let you know. I need to tell you all these things. So like you might like knock the dust off my pussy and then I might bleed a little bit. Like we don't know. And then also my bed might break because (laughs) this is another puzzle. Well, it's already broken. It's already broken and my ass is not fixing it because I'm like, let's see how long she's got. Like I'm going to ride that bitch till the wheels fall off. And um, so it's like all these things. Instead of another notch in your belt, it's just like (laughs) how many... How many can I break? I know. Like, I'm like, you know what? Like, these are all the punch list items that I have. Um, But the biggest thing is to remember that men don't care. They don't fucking care. Like, I talked about this with BBD. Like, men don't give a shit. You know? We have one friend that he was like, I feel like all of those things go out the window when somebody is naked in front of you. Yeah. And yeah. also like, I mean, I used to be this, I'm not anymore. And like, I love being on top. And so like, I, you know, you worry a little bit like a little jelly roll. They're not looking at that. Yeah. They're looking at your titties bouncing in their face. Yeah. There's a <laughs> naked woman on top <laughs> exactly. of that. Yeah. Like they're just like, Oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? They're not worried about anything that you are. So just remember, like, just love yourself. And that's where your confidence will come from. I feel like. right. And I feel like, you know, you could be the most gorgeous, perfect body person. Mm-hmm. And if you lack confidence, it shows. Absolutely. You could be somebody that has a bunch of quote unquote flaws, but if you're confident, it's sexy as hell. And so, I mean, I have a lot of guy friends and I feel like a lot of them have said similar things because, you know, I, I'm hard on myself. I, mm-hmm. I'm like, Oh, well, I mean, we all know, are. Yeah. You know, I, well, I like, I mean, I don't like necessarily being, I mean, I don't look at myself naked and go, oh, damn girl. <laughs> like, no, like they're, I'm like, I'm like, oh, well, that, that needs to be fixed and that needs to be fixed and that needs to be fixed. But I, I think I used, I used to let it affect me more yeah. than I do now. That's a good thing. And that's the way you should be. And if pe- and if you're with somebody that does care, you're with a fucking child. Like yeah, you are like, with fuck that. Yeah, you are not that's no not OQP. Yeah. <laughs> that's for damn sure. You need to call in them murder hornets and be like, get yeah. the, get him the fuck out of here. I, yeah. <laughs> All right. So my next question is how do I change the patterns in my life? How can I get the motivation to start when everything seems so overwhelming? This is something I actually get a lot of people that talk to me because they hear about all the change that I've had in the last 60 to 90 days. And I will tell you, there's this two key words, baby steps, like start to change your routine in very small ways, you know, start a new workout, uh, to get a new workout, buddy, start at a new gym, start a fucking hobby, you know, make a date once a week with a close friend, like think small. You know what I'm saying? Like change those patterns in a small way at first. I posted something recently and it was like reading 20 pages a day is 30 books a year. Yeah. Um, You know, running one mile every day is 365 miles. Saving $10 a day for a year is $3,650. Right. All of those little things add add up. up. Yes. Um, And I was going to say like a big thing for me too, when it comes to changing your patterns and cycles is to change your habits and your habitats you know you have to make room for the change and for me like one of the as we talk about this like one of those things is stop frequenting the same dive bar stop going to the same places you know what I mean and then you you made me laugh so hard because you were like Adrian maybe we should stop getting trying to get we should stop getting kicked out of our healthy habitats <laughs> yeah, like, like, like the, the fucking pool. pool I know you know I talked about it when you weren't here and like that was some fucked that was fucked up that was ridiculous. Yeah. We were not acting a fool. No, I mean, not a little, at that point. but not much. Yeah, no. And I think we were the only thing was like we weren't we were just laying there talking all day. At that, yeah. The shotgunning <laughs> busting in my face. Oh, yeah. your idea. I, no. <laughs> okay, first of all, I needed to I need to That's correct our that. together. Yes. So I need to correct that. Okay. Is I said I wish we had beers left because oh. we would shotgun them and we had one can of 
ten percent. <laughs> Orange crush, Grape, grapefruit smash, oh, grapefruit crush, stuff. yeah. And Adrian's like, "Let's just do that." And I was like, "That's a terrible idea, Adrian. We're going out for tacos later, which means yeah. we're going out for margaritas later." She goes, "It's fine. We'll, we'll just we'll just share it. We'll split it. <laughs> Come on, let's do it." So it, it was my idea to shotgun, but it was her idea to shotgun that particular beverage. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so, let's clear things up here. Yeah, so, you can't have I thunder like, without lightning, right? And vice versa. Okay, um, <laughs> I'm here for it. So yeah, we both. Um, we were both responsible for that ingenious idea. But whatever. Um, you know what? It was fucking worth it. That was probably one of the most fun days I've had in a really... Like, and we both needed it, too. Yeah, and it was just me and you. Like, that's what's so fucking awesome. There was no one else there. Like, we were just enjoying each other's company, having fucking fun. Yeah, and honestly, even if I was... a even, Well, that's the other thing. Even if we were both sober as hell, like, that was the first thing we were opening... Yeah, we would have laughed and reacted the same, same way. Way, yes. And if you refer, if you want to talk, hear about what we're, or you want to see what we're talking about, you can go to my what is it? It's on my Instagram. Yeah, it is. And your TikTok. Oh yeah, and my TikTok. Yeah, and it's it's fucking funny. Like it's shit happens, you know. Yeah, I can say like I laughed so hard that day with you. My stomach was sore the next day. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, and then we, so then fun. it was a whole uh, yeah, there's a lot going on that yeah. night. Then we went to yeah, we went yeah. to go get Mexican food, and that was yeah those yeah. The, the, remember those guys at the bar? They're like, we're from Germany, and I was like, okay, because I can speak a little bit of German, and they were like, we don't know what you're saying. I'm like, bitch, fuck you. <laughs> By the way, so you know what? That is one of our habitats. That place is one of our habitats. And I'm laughing because we went there. Was it last night? Fuck, what day is it? No, night before. Yeah. Thursday. What's today? Thursday. Thursday, yes. Yeah. So we went the other night, and my favorite server wasn't there. And I saw his name tag. So I, like, stuck it on my shirt and sent him a text, a screenshot, or a selfie. And I was like, where are you at? <laughs> What's going on? Like, how funny is that? Imagine yeah, being Why like, are you not at work? I know, on your day off, like, some girl sends you a screenshot, a selfie of her with your name tag on. Yeah. And, like, bitch, where are you at? But I love that fucking place. Yeah. That's you cannot what, get kicked out of there. No. And I don't. Well, our kids are <laughs> oh going to get us kicked out of there. Before we're going to get ourselves kicked out of there. Yeah. That's where our kids were like, can I get a home? Yeah. yeah. And it's funny because I ended my episode like that, my bonus episode. And I was like, Adrian, what the fuck is wrong with you? But you know what? It's just who I am. I wake up every day and ask myself that. (laughs) Who do I think I am? So anyway, so, you know, try not to get kicked out of your healthy habitats. Remember to change, you know, your habits and your habitats and just think, just think small. You know, small ways to change and help break those patterns and cycles. That's yeah. my best advice. It was like read 10 pages of a self-help book. Listen to yeah. a podcast. Let's like go. Yes. Go work go out. Go for a walk or yeah. something. It's this one new thing that you're doing for yourself. It helps break that pattern. For yeah. Sure. And it's like then and then you feel good about it. You feel like you accomplished. It builds your confidence. And, and it's then, a twofer. That's a twofer one right there. Yeah. <laughs> so you want to know another thing I started doing? I don't know. A lot of people that follow your podcast uncle mode started that tape challenge oh right 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 um so i've been doing that and it was um i put on one of my tapes to say three nice things about myself every time i look at that tape so uh, that's that. another thing that i've been trying to do because i am my biggest critic mm-hmm. of the amount of times that i met yourself up, during a day yourself i'm down. like yeah, yeah chris why are you so this why are you so that you know n- and like I needed that reminder to yeah. say nice things about because what you say to yourself is going to show. No, what you say about when the negative things you say about yourself are the negative things you're going to project out to the world. And then that's the negative things that are going to you're going to attract come come back yes. to you. Yeah, yes. the law of attraction. And then on top of that, you know, how you treat other people is typically a reflection on how you feel about yourself. Yes. And it's it's easier for me to make sure other people are OK. But that's so. not the way it should be because you cannot pour from an empty cup. Exactly. So remember so. that. And yeah, and everybody go follow Uncle Mo. If you go to my Instagram page, I follow him. So you can click on like the people that I follow. It's only five. And you can click on him and follow him because he does do motivational things, posts motivational um, content. So a great account to follow. All right. So here's the next question. Where's the craziest place you've had sex? By the way, I've gotten this question like 10 times. <laughs> I'm sure. So, Okay. Um, I was thinking about this cause I'm like, God, like what constitutes crazy? You know, it's different for everybody. That sauna story was pretty intense. Oh my God. The gym. Oh yes. That was hot by the way. Oh, come on. Fucking Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> I might keep this in. You might. I might keep this in. I just, I just took Rosie and threw her across the room. This bitch is making noise. She's she still in here from, uh, 
Yeah, from BBD. God, I, that's the whole. You do not need to smell that. Like, he was, he was I, I won't. I won't. I think He's so. out of control. All right. So I was thinking, yes, the gym thing was really hot, and then um, also Phys- like physically hot too. It was a sauna, yes, and that was crazy. Um, but I think probably the craziest place, and it wasn't even sex, but giving my coworker a blowjob in the office. That was really fucking risky, man. Like I could have gotten fired. I could have lost my career. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say that, you know, that blow job in that coworker's office was pretty up there for as far as wild and crazy. But I also think with Pawn Star, I was, we were all about like public sex. So we would fuck on his back deck, middle of the day, sunset. Um, he would finger me fucking anywhere. So there was oh a lot of was the best for that, by the way. You know, I wasn't going to talk about this, but I'm fucking gonna. (laughs) I actually saw him recently. Um, I'm not going to talk about the details, but, and it's, we're strictly friends, but it was funny because she still hasn't broke her diet. So it wasn't, that was not the right. So, but I saw him for the first time in a really long time and it was so amazing to see him, you know, like just seeing somebody from your past, someone that loves you for you as a friend, by the way. But anyways, um, I saw him and it was funny because we were just like doing some things together and like had a little business deal together. And, um, I, I sent him an email after I, like when I left and I was like, Hey, it was really good to see you. Like, I'm so happy that you're doing so well, yada, yada, yada. And, um, he wrote back and said something else. And I go, it's too bad. It was so busy in there. We couldn't have fingered things out. <laughs> so I'm like, he was the best fucking fingerer, fingerer. This motherfucker knew my pussy better than I did. Okay. Like he changed my life when it came to fingering. So I will say like, he would finger me anywhere, any and everywhere. And oh, it was the best. It really was. And I got to say, I would probably, I don't know if I would have turned it down if he was like, can I finger you? I probably would have just dropped trout right there. Yeah. Right, right there. <laughs> it's the best fingering ever. Like, I don't even know how to explain that. Like, it's so weird. It sounds like so middle school, you know, guys finger you or whatever. But oh my God. No, no, I've mm. had some the best. Yeah, where I'm like, okay. Yeah, but we used to fuck on the back deck. We used to open all of his windows up and like, and I'm very loud. And we would just like, the neighbors would all hear and stuff. So he was probably my craziest. Do you have a craziest place you've ever had sex? I mean, I wouldn't, I mean, it's not crazy, but so there was one time on a beach at like 4 a.m. Like people are like walking down, <laughs> like do- walking down the beach to watch like the sunrise. And I'm just like <laughs> there on a lounge chair. I'm like, <laughs> were you riding me? What position were you in? I was bent over the lawn chair. Oh, lawn chair. shit. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. No one said anything? No. Enjoy the show. You know yeah. what? Keep it moving. It was, I just, it was like, I, so I I've had, like, I've had sex on the beach. It is not what it's cracked up to be. Uh, no. And so the lounge chair, I think, came in clutch. In that yes, situation. that is. And you got, and yeah. bending over, that's a good position. I'm going to save, I'm not going to spoil it because I'm hoping that my best friend, Jen, comes on this show because my 23rd birthday will go down in infamy. Okay. Like it was the wildest, most insane. You know what? That was probably the wildest place I've ever had sex. Now that I'm thinking about it, uh, but I'm not going to share it right now because I'm waiting for her because she was fucking there. And let me just tell you, it like was present. Witnessed it, was, it. This bitch witnessed it. It was eight hours of fucking debauchery. Okay. Like you don't even know it's, you know what? It's going to be worth it. I, I actually was talking to her and I was like, Hey, I'm going to come down I was like, I'll bring all my shit because she lives at the beach. I'm like, I'll bring all my shit. We can do it in your fucking closet. Like, that's how bad I want her on my show. Because this story alone and some stories that I have with her, they're absolutely insane. So stay tuned. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Next season, I got to get her on. Okay. So you want to next... know the craziest thing I just realized? What? You have not had sex since I've known you. Well, that's fucking pathetic. So I'm like, <laughs> 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 thanks, Chris. No, because you're like, I have so many crazy sex stories that I, know. I could talk to her about it and I'm like, well, I don't. <laughs> so I need you to go get laid for my benefit. <laughs> I have a ton of history, but you know, like I said, I'm, I'm waiting for the, I'm just, I want it to be right. I, I want it to feel right. You, I, I don't you want, I don't, I don't want the murder hornet story. You know, no. like I don't want that kind of guy. I want someone that I'm going to have passionate, hardcore fucking sex with. So, yeah. And you know, it's, I, I agree. And I mean, I, you know, I, I tell you all the time that like, no, just don't. I mean, you could. I know you could. No, absolutely. Yeah. There's getting dick is not a problem, but it's getting the right dick. Yeah. And my standards are high. So, you know, it was after I broke up with my ex-boyfriend. There were times where I'm like, yeah, I'm going to just do it. And then I would get to the point where I'm like, All right, I'm not like yeah, I'm not. You're left unfulfilled. It doesn't feel I, good when you do that. Right? Well, no, I, I would just would end up not actually 
hooking up with anybody and because it just didn't feel right. right. It wasn't like it. Right. I'll know when it's right. I'll yeah. know. Like I said, I mean, we'll see what happens with Baywatch. I don't know. I'm not pressuring anything. I'm not like creating like some false sense of what it's going to be. I don't know. We'll fucking see. I mean, I might get, I might go out there tonight and get fucking late. I don't know. Who knows what's going to happen? Yeah, this honestly, is, her, this I, is Hurricane Adrian. We don't know. Thunder and lightning going yeah. out. We don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> and that's, yeah. And that's the thing is, I think that's when it's going to happen for you yeah. is, you know, that's how it's happened for me. I thought I was like, oh, I'm going to go find it. And then I was like, no, I'm not. That, right. And that's not, that's not OQP. Exactly. Yes. And I'm all about that OQP right now. Believe me. Yeah. Especially you waited this long. Like, no. Why are you going to go? I just surprised b- pussy bitch. Like, come on. Yeah. Like, this is not just, yeah. for, oh, I, it's not one size fits all. Like I need the right one. Yeah. You're, yeah. Yes. You, you need to go through a vetting process. For yeah. Oh, vetting for sure. All right. So the next question is what was your best orgasm? Rosie. I know. <laughs> <laughs> She's laying on the floor yeah. over there like all pissed. Um, you know, I was going to say, yeah, I was going to say, um, one I gave to myself. <laughs> That's yeah. probably the best orgasm I ever had. But um, back to Pawn Star and him fingering me. Those are probably my best orgasms for sure because it was the buildup. And he was patient. That man was so patient. I also had incredible orgasms with Mr. July. I would I squirted a lot with him. That's another sign where you know I'm like ready. I'm all out. Amazing orgasms are about to happen. <laughs> So that's another time. Do you, so Rosie was yours. I mean, that, that stepladder orgasm, you talk about that pyramid orgasm. Yeah. Oh I honestly, there's just, and like, no offense guys. It's just something that you guys are not, you just can't do. It just you, like, don't, yeah, there's no offense. Yeah. To that. Don't, right. don't take offense to that. It's just, there's no comparing to what a, but she yeah. does not replace like the actual. Absolutely. I'm here to fucking tell yeah. you, bitch. I've been fucking myself for like 90 days now. And yeah, it's not the same. There's, some, there's mm-hmm. some, yeah, there's something way different about, you know, the actual action yes. where I would take a, no orgasm, I an actual like sex over like the best orgasm sometimes. So. Yeah, you're right. All right. So the next question, this one's really good, by the way. Okay. So how do you know if your partner is into what you're doing if she's not very verbal in bed. Now, this is something that's completely out of my realm because I'm very vocal. Um, I'm a major shit talker. In fact, one of my favorite things to do is to be like, I want you to shut me the fuck up because I talk a lot. I talk a lot of shit. I say what I like. I say what I want. And I say how I feel. So like for me, I'm having a hard time thinking about that. But you said you're not someone who's very vocal. I'm not. Yeah, no. I think I I wouldn't say I became very vocal. But I used to be, like, completely, like, there was no... No noise? Not... not I wouldn't say no noise, but, like, just not really anything. So, I would think body language here comes into place. Like if you're going down on her and her hips are pushing into you more or she's, you can just, I don't know. You can tell she's more relaxed. Like that's a sign. Right? Yeah. I feel like, you know, you can tell, you can definitely tell. I can tell when a guy is like more. Like oh yeah. When you're me. sucking dick. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. When he's just like kind of there like, okay. And then there's like other times where you're like, okay. Yeah. Like you, by the way, I was talking about suck. I, I, I have to go off here. I was talking about sucking dick with hot you know guy on snapchat who has the beautiful cock and we were talking about like how moisture and like what be- did you come up with a name for him yet so we can i haven't i don't know what to call him yet snapchat <laughs> no i gotta <laughs> think of something maybe i can call him patrick swayze because he's like ghosts like snapchat ghosts i don't know i'll think about it you know i gotta name everybody um but we were talking about like sucking dick and like i'm gonna come up, i, I want to have like a you know my just the tip tuesday my next just the tip segment i'm definitely gonna talk about this but i'll spoil it now but and I want to make a TikTok. I got to figure out a way. But it is key to have like a lot of, you need to have like a wet blowjob. Like one of the, then that, like when you're sucking a guy's dick and like if he's not enjoying it, like think about the moisture aspect right now. Like when I suck a dick, I love a sloppy blowjob and I'll deep throat your dick to make the saliva even more. And I mean, sometimes, yeah, it is like my eyes are watering. There's like spit dripping down my chin. I'm into that stuff. But like if you're not, it shouldn't like, look cute. I need to look like I'm beat the fuck up. Okay. Like if I don't look beat up after our sex capade, it wasn't good. Yeah. <laughs> and that's real. Now I'm talking about a quickie is one thing, but like if, I, if we're fucking like, I need to look beat up afterwards. That's when you know it's good. Oh my, I, I can't listen. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm starting to get turned on even thinking about that right now. Anyway. So, but yeah, I don't know. I think body language is huge. Um, 
what, what I, I don't know maybe just ask your partner like do you like that like that's kind of sexy too like you can ask her you know yeah and i think you know just someone who's not verbal carissa would you be if would you be okay if a guy said like do you like that you would respond yeah no yeah. i mean I've, I've been asked that i've i don't know i've never really had anybody be like you know i couldn't tell if you liked yeah. that i think it's nice that this person was even thinking about that like that's that's a giver you know what i mean yeah, i appreciate yeah. that so that's nice so i don't, I don't know. I, I really think it depends on the partner though too i know well you know i talk about confidence we need to talk about communication like you need to talk about sex with your partner it shouldn't be a guessing game like i mean i'm very vocal i'm like i want this that and that too like and i want to know what you fucking want i will purposely ask you you know what do you like that i do do you like when i do that like that's and i know a lot of people aren't that confident but try to be (laughs) yeah it works uh and i and i like when people are like you know what do you like i like that too Yes. And and then I'll fucking... what do you not like too? Tell me yeah. what you don't like because maybe you somebody had a partner previously and they were really into that exactly and you right. think that everybody likes that or my just the tip on TikTok this past week was communication. So for instance, after I was going to bring that up, yeah. Yes, like after I come, don't touch my clit. But I like to get fucked hard after I come. So like I'm someone that likes to come first because then I like to get nailed. So like that's like my thing. Um but like I don't want my clit to like a lot of guys like their dick sucked after they come. I don't like my clit to be touched after I come. So like I tell people that. Well, and that's I mean it was kind of like um even our lemons video with oh, BBD right. yeah. and people were like, "Well, I, what if you like them like kind of bitten or yeah, nibbled or on or, or like yeah. pulled and stuff like that?" Tell your fucking and, partner. Yeah, and you responded and you were like, "So that communicate that." Yes. Because that's not a one size fits all approach. Agreed. And you also communicate because you could have a partner that likes their lemons nibbled on and <laughs> i've never been with a guy who likes their no balls me bit, either but <laughs> but um but then you know you're with your next partner and you're like go to do that thing and you think that it just is gonna drive him crazy and he's like what the hell are you doing woman right and then you get a backhand or something because you yeah. just oh, your teeth God. Yeah. gotta be the fucking day <laughs> i'm into choking i'm into like you know, being pinned down and hair pulled and ass smacked, but I am definitely not into being bitch slapped. I'll tell you that. But if you are, communicate it with your partner. Exactly. I'm not kink shaming. There's no kink shaming going on here. All right. So, oh my God, I am, my tits are sweating. It's time to get out of this room. <laughs> All right. So Carissa, I just want to tell you, thank you for coming back on my show. Of course. Thank like, you for having and me. And seriously, thank you for being such a good friend, you know, during all of this change in my life. It means, it really does mean a lot to me. You know, not only are you a great person, but you love me for my authentic self. You never judge me. And you know, girl, there is some shit that you can fucking judge me for, but really you truly are the thunder to my lightning. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I love you. And you know, I'm really thankful. We were like, we were saying yesterday, like we get each other and yeah. we are two people that are, it's hard yes. to, you know, completely relate. So to like, find like another human out there that's like we're cut from the same cloth, it's like awesome, hell yeah, I, I love agree. it. I'm so glad that you came into my life, and I really think that just like even the circumstances are just like I know this was meant I know, to be. I know you were just like I like her. I'm like yeah. I know it's fucking awesome, and we are just like we are in such similar places in our life, mm-hmm. and like especially like transitionary growth periods of our yep. life that it really I I love it, and me too. Oh, <laughs> friends forever. Let's go upstairs and shotgun beers. Yeah, let's go. Uh, let's go be degenerates now. Let's yeah. go, uh, go get kicked out of our habitats. <laughs> Fuck yeah. That's us. All right. So Cravers, I will see you in two weeks. And guess who's back? My gay husband, Zach. You know, he was the first guest that I had on my show. And I think it's only fitting to have him back for the season finale. And not to worry, I'll be back in September, and I've already been locking down some amazing guests. So much to look forward to. All right, Carissa, let's get out of here, and let's go make it rain, baby. Hell yeah. (laughs) See you guys in two weeks.